Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. We have a good amount of news today, so I'm gonna kinda do this video how I did yesterday, or I just kinda start going through it. However, I do want to say you guys should stick around to this point in the video. Uh, it's critically important central bank digital currencies are interoperable. There's a lot of good information in this, and this is coming from NASDAQ, so they don't usually you know, cover this type of stuff. So to get their perspective on it and what they say, um, it, it, it gives a newfound perspective on things. So definitely stick around for that. But let's Let's start here uh, why Ripple Founders is building a surveillance network in San Francisco. Chris Larson is funding a four million surveillance system for the city. I thought this was a little odd, but it goes into some reasoning. And, you know, the first thing I thought about was like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be, you know, the, the camera system we have with all facial recognition. But they claim that these cameras have no facial recognition. So let's see what it's all about. Um, if you guys could drop this video a like as we get started, that would be greatly appreciated. And let's get into it. So the co-founder of Ripple, Chris Larson is funding a surveillance system. Uh, he made the decision to splash out nearly four million on the cameras because he was fed up with robberies in the city. In an interview, Larson, 59 years old, said that although San Fran has a low level of violent crime, theft is common, particularly smash and grab. After Larson's own car windows were smashed and thieves cut the wires on his home security system, he decided to take action and started gradually installing the cameras in 2012. Now the cameras cover 135 blocks of the city. A company maintains the cameras, but neighborhood coalitions are the ones in charge. They decide where the cameras are put, and they are the ones that monitor them. The idea, according to Larson's interview, is that the cameras are always on and recording and act as a deterrent as well as helping with investigations. Normally, cameras are installed by a police force as seen in London and New York, but Larson's project is different because he is the one solely funding the project and citizens are the one managing it. I will say I'm very glad to know that the citizens are managing it because if there was a central authority of control controlling this, uh, I think we all know how bad that would get in the future. Uh, due to a distrust in the police, this is the community efforts to self-police. Daniel Lawrence, the principal research associate at uh, the Nonpartisan Urban Institute, said... Uh, Larson is not anti-police. He's quite the contrary. On top of cameras, Larson has helped the police department by paying for their internet connections. Uh, sure, a tech bro behind one of the top cryptocurrencies largely used by banks funding a surveillance system might sound intrusive, but don't worry. Facial recognition is not in the cards. Uh, facial recognition is too powerful given the lack of laws and protections to make it acceptable. So there's that, guys. Um, I guess it could be a little worrisome. I guess it could not, but I, I, you know, I still think it's a little weird. You know, why is Chris Larson funding you know all of these camera systems and? You know, they, you know, all right, no facial recognition, but at some point, will they have facial recognition? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this. Also, I would love to know your opinions on what you think about cameras with facial recognition. Uh, would you, is this something that you guys want? Do you want uh, cameras that recognize your face? Kind of basically like a Chinese system, right? Uh, how mainland China has it where they have all the, all those surveillance cameras. Is that something you guys are for or is that something you're against? Uh, I would just love to know kind of where the community stands on that. Uh, let's jump in. Coinbase awarded contract to, prov to provide crypto analytics software to U.S. Secret Service. So Coinbase is selling you guys out. Um, get to a different exchange. You know, if you've already been buying from Coinbase, it's fine. I do a lot of buying on Coinbase. Um, and, and when I still introduce people, I do some buying on Coinbase. But make sure uh, you get some crypto that's not through Coinbase. Put two plus two together. Uh, former Goldman Sachs manager who called the massive Bitcoin rally says he may buy Ethereum and here's his reasoning why. So this is Raw Paul and he says he's thinking about buying Ethereum as he believes the second largest cryptocurrency may spearhead the next bull rally. In a series of tweets, Pal predicts that a broader crypto rally is in the horizon as Bitcoin is on the verge of a major breakout in both the near term and long term. So he posts this chart and he says the time for a crypto rally seems fast approaching. Bitcoin is getting ready, hopefully to break the small wedge but the investment strategist believes that a bitcoin breakout will be preceded by a big ethereum reversal so he says which is also a break of the larger wedge so basically if we break out of this wedge here we'd also break out of this a larger wedge but this time it may be led by ethereum which is also about to break out so as we can see overhead resistance on ethereum one touch two touch will we break out in the third 
We'll find out. Uh, Pal points out that Ethereum has already ended its multi-year bear market against Bitcoin. Uh, the former hedge fund manager explains these factors are driving him to sink his teeth in the second largest cryptocurrency. I don't own F, but feeling the need to think about adding some. My primary vehicle remains Bitcoin. A rising tide will lift all boats most likely. Oh, that's interesting. We just read an article from, uh, I forget who it was from, but Will Mead, another guy. I don't know if he was Goldman Sachs, but he said the same exact quote. A rising tide will lift all boats. So this is the second person we've seen say this now uh, we've been waiting patiently for the breakout for some time who knows if it breaks out now but the clock is ticking in april he made a bold statement that bitcoin could reach a million in three years he says would it be crazy for bitcoin to have a 10 trillion dollar valuation after all it isn't just a currency or even a store of value it is an entire trusted verified secure financial and accounting system of digital value uh, yada yada cryptographic algorithm it is nothing short of the future of our entire medium of exchange system and of money and the platform on which it operates i think this is the biggest trade of our lifetimes and just at the time when we need it most so that is what former Goldman Sachs Raw Paul is thinking. Are you guys involved in Ethereum? Do you guys own any Ethereum? Let me know below. If you guys like daily cryptocurrency news, like the video you're kind of watching here, we cover Bitcoin, altcoins, and just overall what's going on in the crypto space. And also, what is some other news that could affect the crypto space? Uh, make sure you subscribe, and I try to keep you guys in the loop as much as I can. And if you are subscribed, you guys could like the video for me. I'd appreciate it a ton. Southwest Airlines will no longer accept cash in the the U.S. As of July 1st, Southwest stopped accepting cash payments at ticket counters to book flights or to pay for upgrades and extra luggage. The change to cashless at the airport had been in the works for a while before COVID, uh, said S Southwest spokesman Dan Lanson. And he says, and we stopped accepting cash on board in 2008. Airlines and other businesses have to train employees to use cash registers, count money daily, and transport that cash to banks using security services. On board flights, flight attendants would have the same problem and then have to cash out when they are often expected to run to their next flight. So guys... This is something that they're going to want because when you're not using cash, they can actually be more efficient because they don't need to cash out registers. Uh, so, you know, as you guys can see, the cashless society thing has more benefits than than most people realize, right? A lot of companies and stuff, they actually do want this. Um, that's why they're going cashless because not only does going cashless allow for, you know, immediate payments and, and, and settlements and, and things like that, but it also does help things by taking work out of the business, like counting out registers registers, uh, storing cash, you know, everything that has to do with things like that. So just an interesting read, uh, just another example of how we are going cashless. Uh, honestly, I know there's still some people out there who are saying cash is king, cash isn't going anywhere. Guys, cash is disappearing. It's disappearing right before your eyes. Um, at, at this point, I don't, I, don't, I don't really know what to tell you. Not People just aren't going to be using cash anymore. Now, I have some cash. Of course, I have some cash. But, you know, it's not going to be forever. You know, maybe people will, will still hoard cash. Maybe people will still have it. But if you think you're going to be using cash in stores, it's not going to happen because the stores don't even want it. And, and, and since the stores don't want it, you're probably not going to sit on it, right? Because now let's say, oh, well, I, I could, you know, I could use it for Craigslist deals, let's say, right? Like bargains and stuff. But if no one's taking it, like if, say, for example, I have to sell my truck, right? And uh, and you want to offer me cash, but nobody uses cash. I'm like, listen, dude, like, sure, it's cash, but I, I'm going to take this cash and do what with it? Put it in my basement because nobody's taking it. So it's going to force people to not even want cash because the use case for cash will be so little. There'll be like no use case at all because nobody's accepting it. I hope that makes sense. Uh, the prices today for Bitcoin are 9200 Ethereum's at 238 XRP's at 19 cents. Cardano at 12 cents. Chainlink at 682 It's going on a rip up. I think we'll, we, we will be seeing a seven dollar chain link very very soon uh tezos is at 263 i actually guys congratulations to me i started baking my tezos so i i uh yesterday i found a baker i started baking it because I've, originally i was trying to do it through coinbase and i had it on there for months and i'm just not getting payments coinbase support is so slow to respond so i was like you know what f this i'm going somewhere else and uh, so far it looks like it's it's been successful and i think that first payment will be pretty cool so stellar's at nine cents Cents. V chain is at uh, 1.78 cents, and uh, that's basically what we got for today. Our fear and greed index is at 41. Right, guys, I'm so ready for us to just break up or break down, and uh, and you know just really just make a move here. Now, came across this. 
uh, and they were talking about CBDCs, and I was like, huh, interesting. So I read through it. Now this article is a little bit long, but we're not, so we're not going to go through the whole thing. I highlighted the stuff that needs to be going over, and the rest is, you know, if you want to read it, go ahead. But I don't want to make this video like too long. So CBDCs are primed to generate a significant financial shift in our lifetimes. However, unless these in instruments heed the lessons learned from fiat currency, innovation will be for naught. So basically, guys, everybody's making CBDCs, but how are these things going to interoperate? Because if I have a CBDC and you have a CBDC, how is that going to settle? Who's going to get what? How does that work? How do we trust each other? All that type of stuff. So the term CBDC is a slight misnomer. There are, after all, several types. These include retail CBDCs, which are essentially acting as a digital fiat used for daily purchases and transactions. And then there's wholesale CBDCs, which would primarily facilitate interbank settlement. Now, a lot of people believe that XRP is going to be the wholesale CBDC and that Stellar is going to be that retail CBDC, or at least the interoperability for it. Uh, it's retail CBDC that's causing the biggest stir. If their inherent benefits such as ease of storage, usage, and speediness are realized, regional retail iterations of CBDC could readily challenge the dominance of the US dollar. Nevertheless, many now regard the advantages of CBDCs, i.e. for reducing the costs and inefficiencies associated with cross-border payment as retail. So these are bankers, guys, where as to before, you know, they didn't really like the notion of CBDCs. Now they're, they're beginning to acknowledge the advantages of them. Now this goes into say how China is basically working on their CBDC and you know how it's bank issued and, and things like that. And it's in the beta phase and uh, how it could rival the dollar dominance. China's implementation needs to take that interoperability, apply on a worldwide scale and become easily interchangeable with other sovereign digital currencies. Right now they're using things like, uh, they're using WeChat and Alipay. So there's, there's not much, there's nothing for them to, you know, there's, they can't communicate, right? They can't communicate with other CBDCs is basically the problem. It's kind of like just another fiat as of right now. Uh, so according to the Bank in, of International Settlements, 80% of central banks are actively researching or creating a CBDC, guys. Get that, 80% actively researching or creating. This includes the Bank of England led central bank consortium into the utility of CBDCs, as well as the US owned iteration, the digital dollar, and the digital dollar recently gained momentum amid COVID-19 as a proposed medium for stimulus handouts. Uh, I know people who got for their stimulus money, they got a card, right? They got, an, it was like an actual like debit card. And now those debit cards, right? They, they went out and it's digital money on there. Now, how do you think they're going to be getting their second stimulus check? Do you think they're going to be sent to cash the second time? Do you think they're going to be sent a second card? Or do you think the second card is just going to be reloaded with more digital money? Guys, I'll tell you what it's going to be. That digital card is simply going to be reloaded. And it's going to be the same thing for the third stimulus check and the fourth and the fifth. Think about it. Why would they go ahead and spend the money and invest into making actual debit cards and send them out if they weren't going to continue reloading them, if they didn't plan on giving you a lot of stimulus. I think we are not going to see stimulus stop for a long time. Stimulus checks are probably going to turn into a new form of government handouts, a new form of welfare. Uh, it's basically what it's turning into. I don't think we're I don't think we're going to see stimulus checks stop. Why would why would they give out cards? I, I we'll see what happens. Uh, it j just what I'm thinking. Let me know what you guys are thinking down below. Uh, if we're all you know, we all need to be talking about these things and throwing ideas off of off of each other's heads because the reality is no none of us know what's really coming. Uh, all we can do is research and prepare for it. So I, I love reading your guys' comments and knowing what you guys think. So definitely let me know your opinions below. So in Europe, progress towards a digital euro is accelerating. In May, the Banque de France successfully completed, I'm sorry guys, I had to do it, successfully completed a CBDC trial tokenizing $40 million worth of covered bonds on the blockchain and executing settlement via a CBDC. Uh, guys, like I've been saying, we're, we're going into the tokenized economy. So they, they tokenized $40 million worth of bonds. You're going to see the tokenization of digital assets, uh, not digital assets. You're going to see uh, physical assets be tokenized. Sorry. So meanwhile, the Italian Banking Association broke ground by establishing guidelines for digital euro. However, while representing a positive step forward, the highly fragmented nature of national projects may push CBDC into the same trappings as fiat currency. 
Fortunately, via interoperability, these pitfalls can be negated. So basically, guys, check this out. As long as all these CBDCs have interoperability, wow, now this is the next big thing. And what is Ripple always talking about? They're always talking about interoperability, cross-border payments, yada, yada, yada. If, if you guys are real, realize the same lingo, right? It's the same lingo. They just never say what it is they're going to use. But they use the same exact words. They use things like Internet of Value, the Reset, uh, interoperability, cross-border remittances, liquidity, uh, global payments. It's all, it's all the same lingo. At its most basic function, interoperability would allow multiple CBDCs to interact and exchange data with each other. The issuance of internationally compatible CBDCs could cease reliance on costly and sluggish cross-border money transfer services such as Western Union and reduce dependence on interbank messaging services such as SWIFT. Swift is on its deathbed. By that logic, Swift is little more than a glorified messaging system. In contrast with a CBDC, the transfer is both recorded on an immutable blockchain or a digital ledger and physically or rather digitally forward to its destination. Guys, the place that Swift is at right now is Swift only has really a couple choices. They're either going to go out of business because all they are is a messaging system and they, they cannot interoperate with CBDC. So they either go out of business and they fail to adapt or they adapt and they keep all their customers and they allow for interoperability and they partner with somebody like, I don't know, Ripple and they allow for that to happen or they go out of business. That's really the only two choices they have. So which one do you think they're going to do? Uh, most people, when their business is about to go out of business, they, you know, just, just to keep staying uh, in power and having money and, and continue the business on, they, you know, they'll give up some ownership or they'll, they'll you know, they'll take a profit loss just that at least they're still making something so they don't go completely out of business. So what do you think they're going to do? You know, even if they weren't, we're going to make less. Are they going to partner up with somebody and, and allow for the, for uh, CBDC interoperability? Or are they just going to die out? Uh, you know, well, if they die out, that's fine. I'm sure somebody else will come and replace them. But I got a feeling Swift is going to be shaking hands with some entity in the crypto space. Unfortunately, interoperability isn't that simple. To achieve full compatibility, CBDCs would need to share the same infrastructure, code languages, and standards, as well as the relevant regulatory system. See, guys, the problem is all these CBDCs are built on different things. So what is going to allow them to interoperate with each other. Ironically, what might be required as a contemporary SWIFT-like system, a third-party mediator between two distinct CBDCs or indeed digital currencies could validate cross-chain transfers via a consensus mechanism. It's all the same lingo. Mark Carney, the former head of the Bank of England, uh, Bank of England during a seminal speech at the Central Banker Symposium in Jackson Hole last year, Carney argued for an instrument eerily similar to that of Libra to replace the dollar's dominance and promote global liquidity. <laughs> Can you guys believe that? Now he says, similar, similarly to Libra's original intentions, be anchored to a basket of fiat currencies acting not unlike a global reserve currency. I guess we'll see if it's really tied to fiat currencies. I don't think it is. Um, they're, they're imploding the fiat system. Why are they going to back something by fiat? I think they're just saying this. It's going to be backed by a digital asset. or It's going to be backed by gold or silver. It's going to be backed by something valuable. I'm sorry, but you do not start a new currency that is backed by fiat. And if they do do this, guys, if they start a new currency that is backed by fiat, please do not buy. Do not participate. It's backed by fiat and fiat is worth. I think if if they actually came out and they decided to make a world currency and it was backed by fiat, I mean, I I think I would just resort to sitting in my chair and LMAOing. That that at that point, what else are you gonna do? Like it, they're gonna be like the laughing stock. So. Advantages of a single world currency fall in line with that of interoperable CBDCs. So guys, digital one world global currency doesn't sound so conspiracy theory anymore, does it? Does it? <laughs> it's happening right now. Um, uh, I'm sure, guys, people people are going to look at you like you have four eyes, three noses, a mouth that's drooling when you talk about this, but we know where things are going. We know what's happening, and that's all that matters. Shipping giants piloting blockchain to approve efficiency. So blockchain is going to be used on uh, basically these ships to track the shipping containers. Um, so this is where something like, uh, and I'm not trying to shill anything, but like VeChain could be used to track things like this, or there, there are other ones as well. I'm just only really familiar with VeChain, but any type of supply chain uh, type deal would, would be used here. And I think they said they're partnering with... Um, 
we'll, we'll read it in here. So, the port of Rotterdam in the Netherlands has launched a blockchain-based pilot with some of the world's leading shipping companies to pr- improve the safety and efficiency of millions of containers that are unloaded in the port every year. Secure Container Release, the new blockchain application, is reportedly to replace the traditional PIN code with a digital signal. According to the port, the current PIN code system re- re- requires manual processing, which is more liable to error and delays. The digital solution solution is less vulnerable to fraud and will make container handling more efficient and safe. Major shipping giants such as CMA, CGM, Hapagloid, MSC, yada yada, there's a lot of them, uh, will partner with the application developer T-Mining. Okay, so T-Mining is the one who's going to be doing this. I've never heard of them in a three-month pilot. So they're going to be using T-Mining, piloting this technology for three months. Uh, Director of e-commerce, Emil Hoogstedan, says during this project, the different participants will be using a blockchain application that enables them to safely and efficiently organize the release procedure followed by the various parties in the chain. During the pilot project, the pickup rights for the import of containers will be presented as a blockchain-based digital token instead of a PIN code. The token is a kind of digital baton that passes from one party to the next. A blockchain technology prevents a authorization issued by a shipping company from being stolen or copied along the way. So this is going to help them, you know, uh, basically what everything does, right? It helps to know if something's legitimate. It helps to know where something's coming from. And it helps to know where something's going, say if it got stolen or lost or anything like that. That the terminal operator can then rest assured that the container has been released to the correct driver through the unique token. The token is also confidential, so it protects details about the chain and blocks commercial relationships from being exposed during the process. Now, have any of you guys ever watched that movie? Um, I forget what it was called. The Irishman. It was that movie. If you guys watched the movie The Irishman, uh, in the beginning of the movie, I think it was in the beginning, Robert De Niro, De Niro he's driving a meat truck, right? Because he delivers meat to this restaurant. He's di- he's driving this meat truck to, to the restaurant. He goes and he opens up the back of the truck and there's no meat. And the dude's like, who's picking up the order, he's like, what the hell? And Robert De Niro, he's like, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened. The, the meat was here when I left. Uh, so basically... Robert De Niro in that movie, you know, he stole the meat and act like he didn't know what happened. But once all this stuff is being tracked, right? Like, like, uh, like, let's say V Chain has VR codes uh, on this meat. There, that's not going to happen no more. There isn't going to be you no, know, you know, sticky hand bandits stealing meat. It's going to be literally impossible because it's going to be stamped. It's going to be tracked. They'll know exactly where it is, and that's what this technology is basically doing. It's basically like there's going to be no more theft, kind of, or at least it would make theft extremely hard. Um, but anyways, I thought that was just a, a cool example. If any of you guys watched that movie, uh, just know that, you know, if it, what, what that, you know, that type of scene won't be possible in the future. You know, like that's that's kind of the future we're moving into. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video, I hope you did. Make sure you drop it a like. And if you made it this far, uh, then subscribe to the channel where you get a daily video like this uh, every single day, unless if I'm sick or something. Uh, today, guys, I actually I had a snake uh, break into my chicken coop and it killed one of my chicks. That was like 20 minutes before I started recording this video, so that sucked. Uh, but needless to say, that sh- that that snake is now decapitated. Um, <laughs> but with that said, anyways, guys, that's how my day is going. Let me know how your day is going in the comments below, and I will see you all on the next video. Have a great day.